Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Hexlink Numbers by Batdorf Games. It plays 1 to 8 players, takes 45 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 7 and up. And in the game Hexlink Numbers, you are basically playing kind of a puzzle strategy game. You'll be getting numbers of cards in hand, or cards with numbers in hand, and you'll be casting them down to the field, connecting the colors appropriate to the numbers you're playing, and attempting to move across this game board here. Your main objective in the game is to get your piece from the starting location all the way to the very end, and if you can do that first before any other player, you win the game. On your turn, you'll be able to discard cards to draw, play a card, take an action, gain any numbers that are connected to the card that you played, and move your pieces, and then finally draw a card and end your turn. And the game will progress from there, just moving back and forth up until somebody gets to the end. Okay, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's talk about setup, how to play, and then of course, my review. To begin setup for Hexlink Numbers, the first thing you're going to do is take out the game board and place it face up on the field so all players can see it. Then, based on the number of players, each player is going to get a player pawn of the color of their choosing and place it on the start space of the game board. Shuffle the Hexlink Numbers deck, make sure you keep aside the two cards that are basically faceless, and then deal six cards to each player. After everybody has six cards, take two cards from the top of the deck and connect them on the field, making sure that one side is connected and that both of the sides have the exact same color. Colors are always going to be matched in the game. Once the two cards are connected, everybody has six cards and the board is set up, the game is ready to go. So there are many ways to play the game Hexlink Numbers, but we're just going to talk about the main variation and I'll cover a few different ones in my review. The main game is simple. You have six cards in hand and if you are going first, you're going to be taking one of your cards and attaching it to one or both of the two cards that have been placed face up on the field. The first thing you can do on your turn is discard two cards, optionally, to draw a new card from the deck. The next thing that you're going to do is you can choose to play a card from your hand onto the field. If I want, I can take this negative three, I can then go ahead and rotate it so that it fits somewhere on the game board, and then I can place it. If it's a side that's a wild, that wild side can go with any color. However, if it is a specific colored side, like orange, it must be connected to the same side, which is another orange. In which case, Everything that you've connected, including the card that you've placed, is going to be either a number or an action. Choose one action that is either placed or connected and perform that action. Then, every number that you've connected you can utilize in any order that you'd like. I have the numbers negative 3, negative 6, a 5, and a negative 5. And depending on where players are on the board, you can utilize these numbers. If I am the white player, I could go ahead and move my character 5 for the positive 5. And then the other two, which is negative six and three, if anybody was on the board, I can move them down three and then somebody else down or the same person down six. And my obje objective is to push people back on the game board and to move myself. After I've played my card, I'll go ahead and draw a card from the deck and pass my turn. And the next player will get a chance to, to go ahead and play their turn. Instead of optionally playing a car or discarding two cards and choosing a new one, they could choose two place down this card here. It's an action card. It says discard your hand and draw five cards. Remember, you can only take one action, which is usually going to be text, and then you're gonna go ahead and place the cards from your hand to the discard, and you can go ahead and draw five new ones. Then you are going to utilize the numbers that are connected, the five, negative five, and the six. So you can choose the five or negative five. Red is gonna to choose to go five. When you land on another player's space, if you're going forward, you always move up one space in front of that player. And if there's ever multiple players in the same row, you'll just simply move until there's an open space. And the same is said for going backwards, but you'll go backwards in that direction. Then we have a negative six here. I can go ahead and make yellow go all the way back to start. And that's how the game plays. Throughout the game, you're gonna be having to draw cards at the end of your turn, play cards at the beginning of your turn, create combinations with the colors on the sides of these hexes, and then score any of the points that you can, or give other players negatives as they go along the track. Your objective is obviously to get to the very end space of the game, the number 75. And if you can do so, you can win the game. Yep, it's that simple. There's a variety of different types of cards in the game, ranging from numbers between uh, negative six all the way to positive seven or so. And there's, of course, different actions. There are text cards that will allow you to do certain things in the game, like triple your lowest number when you play this card or attach to this certain card, or reverse positive and negative numbers. Uh, you can move a piece closer to an opponent's piece. You can move pieces uh, adjacent to certain players' pieces and discarding your hand to move spaces or to gain new cards. But 
up. That's how you play the game. It's quite simple, but there are a few additional advanced rules, advanced strategies, which we'll cover in my review, which we'll go ahead and do right now. Hexlink Numbers is a tile placement game at its core. You're going to have tiles in hand, tiles on the field, and you're going to need to connect color to color and side to side. You can never connect a yellow side to a red side or a green side to a blue side. However, there are also wild sides which you connect to any specific color that you would like. The more tiles you can connect to, the more value you will gain. If, for instance, I had, I don't know, a three, and then I also had a four and a five, I can use each of those spaces either for just myself, or I can use it for myself and other players. And also, of course, there are negative numbers, which will allow me to push people farther back. If I can't meet certain combinations to gather more than one card, I can simply go ahead and just choose to uh, move the game board if necessary and just place to connect to one card. So that will give me two. And in case like, oh, this case here, I've got a five and a three. And maybe if I'm playing blue, I could use that five to move up five spaces, or I can use it to make this red player go back five spaces. Uh, this is the advanced game board here. The advanced game board is kind of cool. There are multiple different like areas in the game board that will trigger certain things to happen. Whether it be a safe space protecting your character, a dangerous space which could affect you negatively, or perhaps a teleportation space that will let you move up uh, uh, onto a location on the main game board, uh, thusly progressing you through the game board like chutes and ladders would. Um, there are spaces that let you draw cards and discard cards and all kinds of unique little things. And then there's also a round tracker. So you could play based on rounds. There's a bunch of combinations of strategy and style to this game that you can kind of mix up. Do you want to just play a number of rounds? Do you want to try and push to 75? Do you want to play the basic game mode where you flip the game board over and you just simply play the base mode where you're just trying to get that 75 space? Um, if your deck runs out, you're basically re reshuffling and playing again up until the point where like you could play a long mode if you wanted where just the game plays out until all cards have been exhausted and whoever is the farthest along wins. Um, but there is basically a ton of different options and a ton of different players for this game. But the game is very simple and very straightforward. Connecting the sides of your hexes to as many sides as you possibly can on the game board and performing the action. No, only one action, you can't take more than one, but then you get all the numbers you can connect to as well. And basically choosing the best methods for movement that you possibly can. Personally, for me, I prefer the main game mode. I, I like the, the, or the, sorry, the advanced main game mode where you're playing with this side of the game board, utilizing all the different pieces and structures here. I also prefer playing this game with at least three players. So one and two players are fine. There's certain variants that will work specifically for that game, but this is gonna be definitely a party game where you're having lots of players, lots of connections happening, and a ton of different moving pieces where you feel like you're winning, and then all of a sudden you're not, and it kind of has this back and forth. It's like a take that kind of puzzly feel where you can choose Choose and perform all the best things you possibly can on your turn, which can give you the best best options to like move across this game board here. But there's also ways where people can come back and play and like be able to possibly catch up in the game. And of course, just having the luxury of kind of making this a game that works really, really well for kids when you play the base mode, and then more for adults and kids to play as you've learned the base mode to play the more advanced game mode. Nothing is super complex as far as the different actions. They all make sense. Some are obviously better than others. Sometimes you'll have card connections that will work better than others, and sometimes you won't. And you'll have to try and kind of create your own locations on the game board so that you can utilize a really strong or powerful combo. That being said, there's also specific cards in here or tiles that have high amounts of wilds. It could be a two or a three, or there's even some cards that have almost every side is a wild. And if you can do that, maybe if you have this like space here that's got like three separate sides which is really hard to get to you can place a wild down and now you've gained all the numbers a four a three a three and a five and of course you could use the negatives if you'd like as well to push your opponents back artwork in the game is limited this is not really a high artwork i mean i really kind of wish the graphic design was better for the main game box i think uh, if you had a really a really nice graphic design for this and stylization to be really cool um but the, the tiles are fine they work pretty well i just want this to be changed. But as far as how the numbers work and explanation of the tiles works, it's all really straightforward. This is definitely more of kind of like, it's a mix between like an educational game, um, utilizing math, addition, subtraction, and all that kind of stuff. It also pushes into the strategy game because you're deeply trying to determine how to place the puzzle and get your best results possible with the cards in your hand. Surprisingly, this game, I wasn't sure what to expect from it. I was like, I don't know, is this gonna be like a math game where I'm just kind of like playing things to plus and minus? No, it's, it's actually fairly in depth. 
And with lots of players, this game gets nuts. Lots of crazy things can start happening where you're moving forward on the spaces and pushing people back and landing on crazy spots that can move you in different areas. And if you like those zany, crazy type of action games, then I think you're going to enjoy this one. Obviously, I prefer this at, at least three to four players plus, then the more players, the merrier. If you're interested in Hexlink numbers, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check out this game. Uh, it'll be on Kickstarter. Um, I strongly recommend games like this for people who like to teach their kids, people who like to, like, this is like a good learning tool, but it's also a fun learning tool as well. I'm excited to see what the game looks like in its final iteration as well, as the final quality and stuff like that goes but it's straight up it's right down the middle for me as far as how it looks but the gameplay is super solid and it's a fun little party game as well thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game hexlink numbers if you're interested like i said there's a link down below in the description that you can go ahead and check out this game as well as of course unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more Subscribe to the channel if you'd like. If you've seen more than one of our videos and you appreciate the reviews, go ahead and do that as well as hitting the notification button. Thank you guys so much. Live streams Wednesday, Wednesday on whatnot and Sunday is on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube always at 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to crafting a hex number tile pile with you next time.